Welcome back to Vintage Vinyl here at CourierJournal.com. It's the show where we make lists and then argue about them. My name is Jeffrey Lee Puckett, my co-host Tom Heiser. We both work here at the fabulous Courier Journal, yes. but mostly we sit around and send instant messages to each other about music and bands. Uh, we do very little actual work. Yeah. And yeah. <laughs> this, let's put it this way. Discussing uh, our top tens takes up an awful lot of time. Well, yeah, it's hard. Oh, it's yeah. hard work. Uh, but this was fun work this week. Imagination sets in. Pretty soon I'm singing. Do, 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 looking out my back door. Coons Clearwater Revival. Oh, CCR. GOP, I'm going to start this off by saying that Aside from the cure, this is going to sound strange. <laughs> it already Aside does. Aside from the cure, <laughs> CCR is on my high school playlist. It's like the, one of the formative records or, or bands uh, that I listened to throughout uh, throughout my uh, uh, Bush Light drinking years. Nice. I'm going to start it off with one of my favorites, Down on the Corner. That's this, a, that sounds like a Bush Light song. Oh, it is a Bush. you you, you got to have the you got to have the double deuce. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, uh, Down to the Court is, is, is a really, really fun song. I've, yeah. I've always loved it. I went, I went Melancholy from my, my number 10 is Who Will Stop the Rain. Oh, ooh, that's yeah. low. That is pretty low. That's pretty low. Uh, well, it's good. You, you, you'll find out why. All right. Uh, okay. All right. Number nine, I'm going with Bad Moon Rising. Mm -hmm. and just so much fun. And a couple of great uh, uh, pop culture references to that, too. Obviously, it was used in um, uh, American Werewolf in London, but also a great reference to it in The Big Show. Is there any song not referenced in the Big Chill? Well, my number nine is uh, one of the greatest opening guitar licks of all time, Up Around the Bend. Yes. Yeah. I'm not even going to attempt to imitate it because it is, it's one of a kind. Well, you know what? It's my number eight, and so I am going to imitate it. <laughs> <laughs> I love, it. I love it. You should sing the opening part of it. <laughs> That's okay. No, it, I mean, that might be the best guitar um, of all their, uh, in, in their whole catalog. I went mellow for my seven, as long as I can see the light. Um, it's a very, uh, one, of, one of the few ballads, really, that they ever did. I can't really recall them doing that many that ballads. That is really, yeah, I know, I, it's... It's high on my list too, but I, it, 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 it's funny that you had it. Uh, I was thinking the same thing, you know. As, as you know, why was I, you know, so attracted to that song? And and, and maybe it was it's it, it, it's a ballad, but uh, I, you know, the lyrics, you know, yeah. really really special for me. Number seven, I'm going with Lodi, uh, which is kind of a shout out to. Uh, I mean, they're they're from, even though they you know sound very Bayou and very Southern, they're from uh, Central California, and there's a little bit of that. You know, kind of Buck Owens, kind of Bakersfield, you know, California country in some of their songs. It also oddly reminds me of uh, Bob Seger. Interesting. Yeah. My number seven <laughs> is Green River. Green, wow. Green River is another one of those Bayou Swampy songs that, yes. that made everyone assume Credence was from yes. Louisiana. I always just thought it was a little too swampy. How can you be too swampy? How can you be too swampy, but no, I, I, I agree. I, I think it's. I, I think it sounded a little too far afield for them. Number six, I'm going with a, a standard, but it's uh, it's a little low, maybe. Uh, Proud Mary. Do you think it's low? You think it's a little too low? It's not low enough. It's not even on my list. <laughs> Proud Mary. It's a staple. And I don't want to say because we have, we, believe me, we've left enough staples off of, <laughs> off of lists in the past. But Proud Mary is a great, a great song. We'll keep on fighting. Proud Mary, keep on going. Rolling, rolling. 
If I could somehow erase all the hundreds of times I've had to hear Ike and Tina Turner sing it, if I could just erase all that kind of and, and karaoke versions and everything else, it would stand as, as a really great song. But I just can't erase all that. I challenge you to listen to me sing karaoke. Wow. <laughs> I, I will do that. I will do it. Okay. That's the most frightening challenge <laughs> ever issued. Proud Mary. I mean, My number six is a little, little I noticed it wasn't, wasn't even on a certain uh, co-host list. But Sweet Hitchhiker. But it's a gold star. But Sweet Hitchhiker. Yeah, it's that's it's actually... their last great song. It was on their last album, uh, an album, unfortunately, where the rest of the band, which was not nearly as talented, <laughs> insisted on writing their own, in contributing their own songs. Fogarty only wrote two songs. Um, and not coincidentally, they were the only two good songs on the album. Believe me, I, it, that's not going too deep out of the playlist. You know, I know there are a lot of CCR fans that might not know. They'll know Proud Mary, but they will not know that. But they, they, should, they should definitely take a listen to that song. Just as we should take a listen to the wisdom that's going to come from the Magic Guest Ball. The Magic Guest Ball. This thing is it's amazing technology, it is amazing. the way this works. Let's see what the Magic <laughs> Guest Ball is going to bring us. One, two, three, four. Hey, it's Duke Meyer from WFBK 91.9. Good job, guest ball. Hi, Jeffrey. Hi, Tom. Thank you for having me on to talk about my favorite Creedence song. There's actually three off the album Pendulum that I really like. Pagan Baby, Sailor's Lament, and Molina. But if you want to lock me into just one, I've got to say Pagan Baby. I think it's six and a half minutes of absolute CCR deliciousness. All right, what's your number? What's We're your going number, number five? five? And long as I can see the light. Uh, there was, we go. It was down to number eight for you. I, again, I love the I love the ballad part of it. We kind of talk. It's a little. I, I think about it now. Why? Why that? I mean, as slow as it is, but I I, I really think it might be some of their best lyrics. It's, it's, it's kind of gospel-y in a way, yeah, I which, which I, I, I like that a lot. Uh, number five, maybe for me, maybe their most pop song, like a real top 40 pop song, Hey yeah. Tonight. But I, but I love it. Yeah. I love it. And it's going gonna, it's, it's gonna to show up in mine, too. But that is Hey Tonight. Gonna be tonight. Don't you know I'm buying tonight. I think that that refrain kind of more than some of the others is, is yeah, like you say, it is poppy. Yeah. It kind of gets away from either that kind of country sound or the swampy sound. As we I mean, said. Fogarty is one of the greatest hook writers uh, of, of that era. And Hate and Night is probably the most uh, bubblegummy. Mm -hmm. It's by, by, by their standards anyway, it's, it's bubblegum pop. And, and I love it. Number four. I am going with traveling band because uh, again th that beginning 747 coming out of the sky. <laughs> Would you take me down to Memphis on a bit? That I want to move. Uh, here, why don't we just here, for the next two minutes or two and a half minutes? So will you let me go? <laughs> <laughs> Traveling Band is just a terrific song, and I know that that as I was sitting in the back of my buddy's Corolla, going like this, that at some point I had to pull back and with a splattering of foam and saying, "Won't you take me on a midnight ride? I want to move." Did you did you give the big scream too? I'm sure. Oh yeah, <laughs> Traveling Band. It, it, it is it, it is a, just a a blast. Uh, very rock, very rocky song. I love it. Have you ever seen the rain? Is my that's my Two that's next on my list. I got, I got all the crucial all, rain songs. Excellent. It, funny enough, it's, it, it's not going to be in my list, but I appreciate the fact that it did make yours. Thanks. At the heyday of Credence, these guys were putting out two, three albums a year. They put out probably six albums in three years. And they were outselling everybody, the Beatles and everybody. And Fogarty felt like 
he was just so far behind all the important artists. He felt like he was not as important as Dylan, not as good as the Beatles, but they were reaching just as many, if not more, people. I always found that interesting that he was so insecure when he was writing one classic top 40 song after another. Well, my number three's already been covered by GLP quite well, Hey Tonight. We love, we love the rock sound to it, so a little higher on my list, but we, we've got them in the top five. My number three is one you will hate because it is the swampiest of the swamp songs, Boy, Born, on the, look, Born on the Bayou. Let me swim through the muck in the mire, man. <laughs> that, that is, this is really swampy. It still kills me that when they wrote this song, they probably had never been to Louisiana. <laughs> <laughs> you know a Canadian accent's in there. All right, Heiser. Number two. It's a little low, really high on my list for a couple of reasons. Uh, low on your list, but who will stop the rain? There's a terrific line in there about um, uh, five-year plans and new deals wrapped in golden chains. I mean, that's a very pessimistic. See? If you're looking at, you know, you know, I don't want to hear anything more about, you know, using the, the New Deal or, you know, Soviet five-year plans to improve. This is just, everything's just kind of falling apart. It's a, it is a very dark, dark song. Crowd and rush together, trying to keep warm. Well, when I was nine, ten years old. And now, story time with Jeffrey Lee Puckett. Out shopping with my mom. <laughs> probably at the Woolsworth, something like that. <laughs> Consolidated. Yeah. Uh, I was hiding in the clothes racks, as kids are wont to do, you know. And uh, all of a sudden, at a volume which is unimaginable for a department store, somebody... <laughs> There was a jukebox in this department store for some reason. This was when department stores had record wow. sections. Okay. Somebody put on Run Through the Jungle with Good the choice. jukebox turned all the way up. And none of the employees could figure out how to turn it down. So the entire song played at a volume that was just making clothes fall off the racks. <laughs> and it was so scary. No. I mean, it just, it just sunk into me so deep. I was just terrified of, of this song and that bass line. And, Don't and, look back. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It, it was like being chased by the, by the boogeyman. This has been Storytime with Jeffrey Lee Puckett. So that's why it's number two on my list, because it made quite the impression. Well, strong, strong story to back that up. But that is, no, that is a great, you know, it, 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 was, it was up there probably in the 13 to 14 range for me, but that is, yeah, uh, it might need to move it up on that. 200 million guns loaded, the same cries taking. And I run through the jungle. And I run through the jungle. All right, we need to, uh, we need to coordinate a little. Uh, we need to say this all at the same time. So on the count yes. of three. On the count of three. One, Our number one CCR song is one, two, two three. Fortunate son. son. Yes, we you know, agree. Yes, the long storied history of vintage vinyl. Never has it happened that the the, 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 the twin minds of JLP and TEH have chosen the same song. We've gotten awfully close. I can't believe it took us into our 50th episode to agree on a number one. <laughs> For those one. of you who've missed the last 49, you know, CourageJournal.com's yeah. Facebook page, you, know, you can get there at Vintage Vinyl and, and see them. So why do you love Fortunate Son? Because it is one of the great... Great anti-war song. Yes, it and is. I had a um, uh, during my time serving in the in the military, we had a uh, a, 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 a captain who uh, got very upset. This was during the Iraq War and didn't want to hear any any uh, any uh, uh, songs that might not be patriotic. And he went on a uh, a rant of which songs he did not want to hear. And one of those songs, uh, next to Country Joe and the Fish, and next to Eve of Destruction, was Fortunate Son. Wow. He, in Captain Gwynn, as a matter of fact, he said he hated. He hated the line about some people have star-spangled eyes. Wow. 
Captain hated. Gwen. Captain Gwen did not like that. I can see you. I can see you there while he's doing his little speech, and you're like, oh, "Okay, I'm okay with Country Joe. <laughs> I can do it without Barry McGuire." What? <laughs> CCO. But I gotta have. But I. Gotta How do I get out of this man's army? Oh, I gotta have fortunate son. I ain't no senator's son. You know exactly. That. Oh, that it, exactly. it is. It is a classic peacenik Andy War song, and, it, yes. and it's a break, I think, from any of the other kind of genres or any other kind of rubric that you can pin these guys into. It's, it's uh, I think, in terms of, of subject matter, how it's delivered, the performance, it is the absolutely perfect Creedence song. And I think you said, uh, before we came on tonight, was you, there was no question. Oh, so no. Number one was going to be, I mean, I, I was this, it, it's funny that we were both doing the same thing. We were basically filling in two through ten. And, you know, really kind of think about yep. it. But number one, there was no question. Yep, yep, it was easy. All right, there was... Come on, I had you there. Some folks are on. Oh, they're red, white, and blue. Jeffrey, red, white, and blue. Oh, on that note. On that note, it's a, it was a great list. It was absolutely fantastic. Not a lot of over, a little bit overlap at the top, but um, definitely some songs worth listening to. Again, Sweet Hitchhiker. Again, I got, I got to give you big props for throwing that in. Thank you. Thank big you. Props. I think uh, I'm really curious as, as to hear what people, I'm just curious if people really care enough about Credence as we, we do. We hope so. To, to chip in on this, you need to make your voices heard at the uh, CJ uh, Vintage Vinyl uh, Facebook page and at Twitter, at CJ Vinyl. Jeffrey! There's my mom. It, she's the best. If yeah. I had a fortunate son, he would take the trash out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude, I'm surprised you didn't get on you about that, that story about going, to, about going to consolidate it. How do I get out of this man's family? Because I'm, I'm, I'm finished here. I want to de-enlist. <laughs> All, right. All right. Come back. Join us next week for Vintage Vinyl down here in the basement. Thank you.